Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain today. We are working on harvesting sweet potatoes and this is kind of a, a bit of uh, something you do in the fall, but it's also gonna follow up on an earlier video that we did when we planted these guys. You might not recall, but we kind of did a couple of different experiments. We had uh, multiple different ways that we had planted things from straight slips into the ground to pot it up. Um, plus, we were also looking at uh, varietal differences and to see which one might have performed better. We've already dug our first bed and uh, we're gonna be digging our last bed and we'll show you the process of how we were digging them out. But in the first bed, just to kind of give you a little bit of a spoiler alert, we think there's one way of planting these things that is superior to another. So let's find out how and go do it. Okay, here's our last bed. We have three varieties in here. I kind of trimmed up the edges a little bit. Uh, so we can get to it easier. But uh, these guys really produced a whole lot of vine this year. Matter of fact, it was really attractive to some deer who got into our garden and kind of nibbled on things. So we ended up having to uh, kind of protect them up here. And you might recall we mentioned in the video when we planted that we were going to take excess ones of our own slips and plant them like we did our potatoes on the top of our compost pile. And they really grew well all the way up till about the 1st of August. And then we had some migrating nutria that came in and before we could protect them well enough, they basically demolished the entire pile so that the sweet potatoes down there pretty much, they, they never even got a chance to recover. Um, so that unfortunate, that part of the experiment, seeing if sweet potatoes growing in a compost pile would produce big tubers, we're gonna have to save that one for next year. So, it was deer and nutrients. Yeah, right? the deer came in later, even even though um, basically since we lost them, I didn't go through any more heroic measures. But we uh, did net through a net over it. I did put a did put a bird net over it, but they just pawed at it and uh, they got they got into it. It it was it was sad, very sad. Yeah. But we <laughs> got more than enough potatoes. I think we're going to have out of these beds. So let's uh, take a look in here and. Um, see where to start digging we've got uh, a lot of vine some weed although the weed pressure didn't show itself outside of this so we got here's a here's a main plant and this variety looks like it's probably our variety because of the skin color on this guy. As soon as I can get it, kind of. Well, we're going to have to dig that one out with a, with a spade, it looks like. I thought maybe it might be loose enough to come out on its own. Now, I'm cutting these vines off with a pair of hand clippers instead of hedge clippers because I've got drip lines in here. And cats. And you know, now I got cats. But I, think I just this is fun. I just want to make certain that uh, I'm not cutting something I don't want to. The fun thing I notice with myself and power tools is I can really cause a lot of damage real fast. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a plant that we've kind of got straightened out. Let me just cut this part out of the way. We can have a clear shot. All right, then we got another one here on this corner. I found it's useful to get the vines, just try to get them off the bed before you start doing any really serious digging. And then here's an interesting thing too. These guys are all really green right now. So you could use these if you were making some Jadam, uh, Jadam liquid fertilizer. These would be super uh, to make fertilizer out of. We've already got like 40, 50 gallons of fertilizer for next year. So we're gonna kind of hold off and not make any out of this. But uh, you know, this, this is the kind of stuff that would uh, have a lot of nutrients in it and minerals in it and what we we're going to do with it is we're just going to sheet mulch it back on the beds 
but if you wanted to make a liquid fertilizer out of it it would be really super okay here's one actually two plants right here on the corner of the bed and a cat to go with it you need to move come on carrots out of the way buddy i'm sitting and watching okay i try to go to the outside of these guys most of the potatoes when you're when they grow they sweet potatoes tend to go down and then the roots fatten up whereas like if you're thinking about regular potatoes they tend to go lateral so that's why regular potatoes do really well in like a uh, you know growing them in a straw mulch or something like that because the potatoes are actually form more towards the surface and these guys are going to go down a bit so this is where the tricky part gets into it is loosening up the soil enough particularly on our heavy soil to see uh, without snapping an actual tuber itself and sometimes you'll hear it when you when you make a mistake you'll hear that crunching snapping sound <laughs> then you hear oh. then you go oh bummer Ooh, look at that i got worms literally not the type that you'd want to get treated for <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're getting it all loosened up here. All right. All right. Now, this variety on this end was planted in a pot. You can see, here's the perlite peat mix near the center of the where the plant was and if you notice what happened here as I dig this and loosen this up oh there's a nice one oh, that one snapped a little bit but it's still a good baker What we ended up ha happening with a lot of these guys is... That one's not as bad. No. So you got... Looks like about off this plant, we got about three really good ones. But you get a lot of this where the root was wrapped around in the pot. And, and really so that's <laughs> Yeah, that's how some of the potatoes come out. So instead of, you know, having that opportunity to go down fairly deep... Let's see, here's a nice one. Look at that bad boy. Well, covered uh, with blood. Yeah, we wa we'll wash all these guys off, and then before we uh, take them into cure, and I usually take things about down to this size because it could be used for um, you know stir fries or or if it's still in good shape by next spring, you could even use them for um, you know starting your next your slips. So like, but most of this rest of this stuff like this those are pretty small but you could still use them in a stir fry you know probably use them right away after a week or two sitting but definitely anything like that just goes to the compost pile and that's kind of it and then what we do is we're just uh, taking these plants and we're gonna throw them on top of the bed but you can see i don't know if you can zoom in there but you can see where the roots were really kind of like twisted around and that kind of constrained things. So what we noticed with the slips that we planted directly without potting up that just had the beginning of new roots is we had fewer cases of this type of thing where, where things were kind of crooked or, or kind of elongated in a weird way. I mean, it still happened, but not like to what we saw with the potted ones. So, but you know, if you get into a situation and your weather just isn't cooperating with you and you got to pot them up. It worked. It works. It's just, I think it kind of takes away from uh, the overall quality. But if you look at this plant, 
and this is kind of what we experienced yesterday when we were digging the first ones is we got at least two to three really good baker sizes and um, we we took off easily out of this bed over here out of 30 plants uh, for us again we're in western oregon um, sweet potatoes are, sweet a, potatoes are, are a challenge but we took uh, easily 40 pounds of potato uh, out Yikes. of that bed <laughs> hmm? Yikes! yeah so how are two people gonna eat them all well you know that's one of the things we're researching is like well maybe we can do is um they store for a long time so that's always a positive you know once they're cured that's the key you if you keep them at a good temperature and humidity um you can get uh, a lot of months out of a sweet potato more so i think more out of sweet potato than you can out of um a regular potato and I did the research on dehydrating them, and it's not a good quality product at the end. Um, in, in what way? Well, it's really crunchy and not like potato chip crunchy, kind of more like, yeah, cha. But what if you used them for like um, au gratins or mashed potatoes? They don't indi seem to indicate that with other people's experience that doing that, what they do with the dehydrated. Um, um, sweet potatoes is they feed them to their dog oh. because it's really good and healthy and they like really super crunchy stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you know, so it's a it's a good bonus for um, their diet. So that's one reason to do it if you want to take some of the less the kind of marginal ones and you know, de dehydrate them for Kelly. So what do you suppose is, is if you if you couldn't keep them dried, you, you know, stored normally, what do you suppose would be? Um, the next, the best thing, unfortunately, is freezing it. Really? Yeah. You kind of freeze it so that then it goes into like soups and, you know, things where it becomes all mo mashed and, uh -huh. and then the next one is canning cubes of it. Oh, okay. You know, pressure canning them. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So that's the other alternative. The dehydrator idea, though, is kind of like the last resort. Mm -hmm. They first, the first indication is just to get them cured really well because you're right, they will store a long time if they're cured correctly. And then it was all kinds of recipes on what to make with them. <laughs> okay, here's another another one that was raised in a pot. And um, had a lot of root wraparound going on here. So the takeaway on this is I mean, here's another not example. the pot. It's like kind of... <laughs> not to do the pot. Yeah, I think that's it. If you can avoid it, you know. Yeah. plant them direct and you know what there was a lot of people that suggested that said it's not that big of a deal go and just do it and that these these plants can take maybe more abuse than you really think they can they can but you know maybe the way to go about it in the spring is for us out here is floating row cover yeah but i see like here's another classic example it's just like just wrapped around itself and the potato just never formed. You know, we got a lot of roots that are going like that. And they were not in those pots long. I mean, it was maybe tops. Three weeks, if it was that. I don't think it was three weeks. It was like two weeks. But it I set the... At the time, though, we it set were... the roots. We were waiting for all of them to get here. Yeah, we had some problems with uh, shipping delays. Right. And then... And then the weather wasn't exactly perfect at that point. And I think that's why we decided to pot some up because we were holding everything to plant. And right. then I think on this case, we'll just go with, you Yeah. Know. So I think what we'll do is, uh, you know, we'll just get the rest of this bed dug up. And, you know, even as wet as it's been around here, um, this, this bed is actually looking pretty good. This was the compost bed. This this was uh, the bed. Yeah, we actually bio we burned biochar on this bed right. for 
all the blackberries we took out of the place. So this was also two experiments on um, how right. you were treating right. them. This, this was the bed that we used. Um, <clears throat> now this bed over here we used to dam. And this bed we just fertilized initially with fish fertilizer. So we fertilized these guys both kind of at the same rate. But once they started really spreading, we stopped fertilizing. And so, yeah, that's gonna be the next thing to say, well, okay, well, how many pounds are we gonna get out of this bed with the fish fertilizer, which we had to pay money for, versus this bed, which we know we got a lot out of it with just using uh, free fertilizer that we made. And no, you don't have to make um, sweet potato JLF to apply just to yeah. sweet potatoes. I think there's some misunderstanding that's going on um, with um, Jadam and Young Sang Cho. When you go back and you look at the book, um, what he's trying to say is if you're, if like, say you're a, a farmer, you're, say you're a sweet potato farmer, right? And you, you know, maybe a market garden size thing and you raise a lot of sweet potatoes. It would make total sense to make your JLF with a mixture of sweet potato, wild grasses and weeds and get, you know, something that is really oriented towards that. But if you're like a multi-crop farmer and you start saying, well, I'm going to make a sweet potato JLF, I'm going to make a, um, you know, a tomato JLF, I'm going to make a pepper JLF. And, and it's like, the next thing you know, um, you're gonna have a whole storage facility full of specific unique fertilizers when in reality, it's like, think of it this way is, if you're a sweet potato farmer, this is what gives you making a JLF out of this, gives you that extra 5%, you know, that gets you, you know, over the top, so to speak, right? But if you're using just a broad-based generalized JLF that's made out of sweet potatoes, made out of chili, and maybe you throw in some um, lettuces and things of that nature, you're gonna end up with um, a pretty good balanced fertilizer, particularly if you add in wild grasses, and you let it ferment over the course of a year and use it the next season, you're gonna end up with a fertilizer that's gonna get you way high in the 90s percent, you know, good results. So don't feel locked in like if I'm making fertilizer for dahlias or I'm making fertilizers for sweet potatoes, that that's what I got to do. I got I to gotta specifically do that. Think of it more like um, diversity, particularly if you're raising a diversity of crops. I think that's kind of the way to do it. Just make it. Just make it, yeah. Because it's free. Yeah, and particularly with this next year, with energy prices the way they're going to be, all kinds of fertilizers that are being purchased are going to be really, really expensive. So anything you can do to cut your cost down, I think that's a positive. Okay, we got all of the vines off and this bed last year had some elephant garlic on it. And you can kind of see we missed a few. This bed definitely had more weeds than this bed over here, which I found interesting. But it could be just the fact that this had a really good compost layer on it. And this one was not so much compost, but more of a, just a straight biochar type, type coating on it. So the weeds got a little bit of a chance to get some starts on it. Um, whereas maybe over here, it was a little more difficult. I did dig one of the ones just to show you as an example. This is uh, done without potting up. It was straight slip. And I think if it had more time, this one probably would have gotten us a few more uh, tubers on it and what I'm beginning to start to see is in this bed here um, that the fertility of the fish fertilizer uh, is not getting as many tubers of uh, big size as I got out of that bed over here so that could be a compost thing but most of the compost on that bed was surface compost and um, I'm not really sure what the exact reasoning behind it is. It could be the fertilization was better with the JLF. It certainly seemed to give uh, more leaf cover um, and we got some big tubers out of it. So what we'll do is we'll dig the rest of these guys and then the next step is we wash them, get the mud off of them, kind of do it as gentle as possible so we don't break anything. And then we're gonna put these guys up to cure for a couple of weeks.
So I let's the noise. Everybody's working on fall projects. Yep, everybody's either cutting wood or doing something. Cleaning so, up. <laughs> cleaning up. So we'll dig the rest of these things, and then let's just go over and after we get them dug, we'll see what uh, how the washing goes. Okay, we got them all washed up. Um, we had three varieties in here, and I gotta tell you, the production on this bed wasn't as good as the first bed. The first bed, and we'll show pictures of it, we got, um, there may be like six more plants in that first bed than there was in this bed, and we got 40 pounds of, of potato easy out of it, and this is maybe 20 pounds. We have some that are, you know, could be considered pretty good size for bakers. Um, what's interesting is the red here, this is Georgia Jet, and it's supposed to be a pretty reliable performer. Um, actually in both beds, what we found was this was the variety that we took from sprouts from the supermarket two years ago, the mystery variety, we kind of think might be Vardaman. Um, and it's performed uh, immensely better. I mean, we're getting more baker-sized potatoes out of them, and um, they just seem to have less splitting problems. I had a lot with the Georgia Jet that had uh, splits, and then they'd heal and splits. And I know the beds were on automated watering, and, and it just seems a little weird, because usually you get splits with, with things that are related to um, alternate wet dry situation and the the um, Mahan or Mahan is uh, yeah I know you're upset about that you got to learn to learn to be disappointed in life <laughs> um, it didn't really uh, produce as many tubers at all and the tubers that it did produce um, are very small um, we actually like this is one of them and it it seems like uh, I don't think I'd grow that one again and what's weird is, is it's the one I got for free. <laughs> it seems to be the best producer. So we're going to try, I think maybe some, we're, we're definitely going to stay with the one that, that, you know, is producing well. It also is going to depend too on the taste. Yeah. Well, we know the one that we, we have had was is, good. is really we got a good flavor. We just wanted to try the others. Very fine grain and it, it had a nice flavor to it. Uh, Georgia Jet, like I said, is kind of more like a yam. It's got a more of an orange flesh to it. It's and really good in the past. It's it's been very good for us in the past, and just kind of surprised it. So it must be cultural, you know, in this particular case. Or it's a operator error. Yeah. But, but um, we got some. That's the yeah. important. Point. We have a total of probably sixty pounds of sweet potatoes <laughs> for two people. So, but like these little guys like this, we'll fry up, um, and then some of them we're going to hold back for uh, making slips for next year. So we kind of got a little bit of everything going on. So anyway, um, this is the big harvest. Be sure to check out the original video that we did last spring about planting them. And uh, as always, stay safe out there, and thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.